Hey guys, Jacob here and today I want to show you how to build a software agency from scratch based on my experience. So I did one video before when I was talking about insights and lessons from one year of running a software agency. Now we are almost in a third year. I think uh, there is a lot of differences and I want to create a whole playlist uh, of the videos where actually I share tips and tricks, insights uh, of running a software agency. In this particular video, let's just focus on how to build one. Let's jump to it. So I prepared this presentation that actually I also showed at Code University in Berlin around two weeks ago. So let's get into it. So a little bit about me here, because if you are new to this channel, you may also want to know it. I'm a Code University student, which is based in Berlin. I was a software developer, so also a little bit of a YouTuber and co-founder of Delta Logic, which is the agency right now, which I'm running. You can here also find my Instagram channel and check all the daily work I'm rather posting there. So yeah, a little bit about Delta Delta Logic, which is this presentation based on and all my experience. So we are a software agency dedicated for sellers and marketplaces. So we create automations, web apps, integrations, uh, scrapers and all kind of custom code thingies related basically to different marketplaces. So if you're a seller on Amazon or Kaufland, you may want to talk to us and we can help you. A little bit about numbers and locations. So uh, we are pretty international. We managed to built our team international. So we are based in Berlin, Poznan, Munich, Utrecht and Sofia. We have over 20 engineers on board, including contractors. So let's say a whole team of employees and associates with Delta Logic is over 20 people. We delivered projects and solutions to clients in over 10 countries. We managed to work with Fortune 500 companies and global research centers and I will talk about it uh, also in a moment. So let me talk to you first about freelancing and running the agency. So let me tell you how it was in my case first. So before I uh, had the agency, I started freelancing. And why did I do it? So I was working two jobs as a programmer. I mean, one was basically Python programmer. And the second one, I was teaching Python, creating online courses for one big US company. And I was doing a little bit of tech consulting on the side. And pretty much when I was doing all of this, I burned out. So uh, I just realized that all of the income that was coming from those free jobs, this is not what I was chasing, right? So yeah, I quit all of that and uh, I decided to start my own journey. So I team up with one friend. He also quit his job and we started collaborating and freelancing together. So we just wanted to build something that lasts and can generate us money in the long run. So what we did is we started getting on projects. Later in this video, I will show you how to get the first clients. So we managed to get our first clients. That was basically some from connections, from some Upwork, and we started working on them. Pretty much we are both engineers, so it was fine for us to work on them. But then we also started hiring contractors. We couldn't afford full-time employee. We didn't have that much work for the full-time employee. So we pretty much started hiring people, marketplaces such as Upwork, and also giving some tasks to our friends because we were both studying technical universities. So our friends were hungry for work. The first name was Selfmade. Probably in this channel you may see some uh, somewhere this logo, uh, which I have here, Selfmade. Right now it's of course Delta Logic, but that was our initial branding. Yeah, in the beginning pretty much whatever we were earning, we were splitting 50-50 as the income. So sometimes I was doing more sales, more marketing, sometimes the second person was doing that. But we were always splitting 50-50 in the beginning. We weren't really saving any money uh, on a bank account for business expenses. Now, how did I really start my agency? Here, we can finally see how Delta Logic started. So the other co-founder left and the new co-founder came, Chris, who is currently there. You probably see him on multiple videos uh, and so on, like he is over here. So uh, he's not technical. He came with the business background and we started for the first time really splitting our roles, which was a game changer because I was focusing on delivering projects to the client and he was focusing on operation and business side. And that was really a game changer for us because yeah, both of us could focus 100% on those tasks. Then we started converting freelancers that were working for us for employees. And also we started converting freelancer clients into agency clients. And that was also a little bit tricky because especially when you're a freelancer, 
you are talking directly to your client and once you grow bigger you need to give this client to your project manager and introduce him to your clients and it might be sometimes tough but we managed to do a really nice and smooth transition then as i said we started hiring developers and managers full-time and that was really a game changer for us because then as a co-founders we could actually focus mostly on the things when the biggest leverages and not really on those repetitive and boring tasks for those uh, we could outsource and uh, give to the new employees also we renamed self-made to delta logic and that was also a very big change for us and uh, the reason was that self-made was that was a very nice name however all of the domains and social media handles they were taken they were busy so we couldn't do really any branding at all so delta logic this is the word that doesn't really exist like you could think about delta logic but that was also taken so we just combined those two words and changed a to o and pretty much we got all of the domains all of the social media handles we started ranking on google so i think that was a really good decision then the next huge game changer for us and our journey uh, was to pick the niche. So right now, as I just said in the beginning, we deliver software to sellers marketplaces. Uh, but before that, we started working with uh, many clients from automotive industry. We started working with many people from logistics and manufacturing industry and also relocation uh, industry so we are kind of going back and forth trying to pick the niche and focus just on the particular clients in the end for us uh, marketplaces work the most simply because we delivered the best projects and we had the best connections to those clients so they could recommend us further but yeah that doesn't necessarily mean that the bad and good niches for you automotive might be the best but definitely while building the agency a software agency or any kind of agency it's good to pick the industry and just build and this so yeah here you have some nice photos from our business trips so as you see networking is really important we go to many networking events we are visiting our clients in their offices and we're doing some speeches and um, universities and other places so this is definitely very important when running the agency to first of all be there and second of all document this process and uh, put it out on social media i think it's very nice to share it now what's the structure of our company this is very important and that was also the game changer that we introduced this year so we are almost there for three years and took us one and a half year to get to this point so initially our uh, organization was very flat. There were not really different like divisions in the company. Everyone was doing its own thing. And I was talking with also everyone. I was doing a little bit of sales, a little bit of marketing, handling clients, even though we tried to keep it separate with Chris, but we didn't really manage to. Like he was also handling clients at some point. But yeah, once we started hiring more people, Rafi came in and become head of project management. And then uh, Jakub Riegel came in, became our CTO. Then we really managed to create those three divisions, which is delivery, and that's responsible for handling projects and clients work. And then we have growth, so that's responsible for sales and marketing. And we have operations in between, which uh, handles all of the legal stuff, contracts, payments, all of the stuff related to the company, such as office, and pretty much, yeah, without it, it couldn't really exist. So uh, once we have those three things, we operate better than ever. And I really recommend you to start it as much as possible. Now for our growth in markets, this is a really nice chart that also show how we grow as a Delta Logic. As you see here in the beginning, we are kind of growing. Those are quarters, right? We're getting more clients and more. However, uh, that was when we were two freelancers then. Once the first guy, Wojtek, left and Chris came in, who is not technical, of course, we couldn't deliver that many projects. It was hard for us to come back. However, later during our work, uh, as I said, we hired more people. We started to climb back and now we are reaching our new record uh, when it comes to revenue and we are not really thinking about stopping. So picking the niche definitely helped us as well. For clients that we do work for, as you see, 
Most of them comes from Germany and US. Some of them comes from Poland because our main office is in Poland and then other countries. Now, let me show you this nice timeline that actually I created and our idea for the agency transformation timeline. Like this is how we want our agency to become in the future. And this is how it's also at the moment. So before you start the agency, you, you have your regular job. Let's say it might be even two jobs, but pretty much uh, you have just the contract and you do your work. But yeah, basically, if you are there, you, you are in the second point. So you have regular job, you're taking your first gigs and you're handling multiple topics at the same time. And somehow you feel like you need to quit your regular job. And this is the moment when you actually start freelancing. So then you are independent from any kind of long-term contract. You are just taking whatever job you want, right? And once you have too much work, you want to hire people. You want to file freelancers. And this is the fifth point, right? This is how you start the agency. That's everything because to be fair, it's impossible that you niche down right away. You just, in the beginning, need to take whatever you can to keep the work going. And, and therefore, it's impossible to pick the niche, even though you should. But uh, I'm just speaking also on my case. We knew about the niche from day one, but we couldn't really do it for two years. But yeah, once you pick the niche, you start getting projects just around similar topics and you are in a six point. And you are in this point, you can start charging much more because you are the expert in one industry, one niche, and people go to you not because you run a software agency, but because, for example, you are a consultant in a certain API. Then point seven, this is, I would say, where we are right now, and you start to productize your services. So because you pick the niche, your clients, they come with similar needs. So at this point, you can productize your service because you did something already a couple of times and you can take this abstraction, create some variables and yeah, pretty much charge the same for the work, but make it much faster. Then point eight, this is something that we really want to do at some point is to build the product that scales. So going from the product type services, keeping the existing clients, work for them, also start to developing our own product for the certain industry that helps. Because once you are expert in the niche, you know all of the problems, you know all of the people, so it's much better to build product that solves some problem. It doesn't have to be a huge product because you are building agency, so you still operate on the services rather than product. But at some point, it's good to combine those two, have your product that you can sell for clients that couldn't afford your services and meanwhile also offer those services. So in the end, in the last point, you want to have working ecosystem of high value consulting, right? Which is the custom software for clients in a certain industry. You want to have the products that scale. You want to have community around that. Um, and yeah, pretty much being number one expert in this specific niche. This is our goal, I would say, for next years. Now, because this presentation is also about starting agency, I would say the most important part is to teach you a little bit on how to get your first clients. So I listed here a couple of ideas on how you can approach this topic. So I also had one call today, of one guy who was actually asking that because he just starts a new agency. So number one, and this is something that you should keep doing uh, over and over, is to use your network. So when you start working, uh, when you start freelancing, building like custom projects, websites, uh, or like designs, you need to know literally everyone that you're doing it, right? So put it out on your social media, call your parents, call your friends, ask your friends if their friends know someone that will be interested in the work. And I'm pretty sure that there will be someone. This really worked for us. So we managed to close a few projects actually, just because we started to talk to everyone. Also here, a very nice pro tip, you can offer 10% of the project to anyone that recommends you and actually manage to help you to get a new, new project. This is how it worked with us as well. Like it was almost three years ago, we managed to get this 2000 euro project. We gave the 10% to our friend 
and this client sticks to us till now. So yeah, I really recommend you doing this. The next thing is use your social media. So again, there are two things. You can directly ask your people via chat, right? But this is like kind of just your network or you can just put posts, put stories, create your agency profile and yeah, also start to do like marketing a little bit, social media platforms. So nowadays I would use LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, what's there, Twitter, maybe Facebook with the groups that would also work. So then start with the local businesses. This is also really cool. People then can recommend you. So that was also the case with us. So when we started, I was living in Berlin and I just started walking to some agencies and asking them for work. So they are usually very happy to share with you. And this is actually also connected to the point six. So collaborate with other agencies. So agencies, they usually have too much work, so they will be happy to share it with you. So you can work as a white label, for example, or um, yeah, they can maybe give you leads also for like 10% or something like that. I definitely recommend you to partner up with some agencies and start sharing the leads, especially if you are in a different niche in a certain agency, you can start sharing those projects. So for example, your agency might be working automotive niche and then the other one that you want to partner might be a design agency, right? Um, so whenever they have some automotive design to do and the client also wants some website, they might give you just the website part to do. Then the next one, I would say uh, definitely networking. So go to the events, tell everyone what you do, give them business cards. Uh, nowadays, you may have those business cards with the NFC chip or QR code. For me, that was code, which is the university that I was studying. That really helped me. We had the university Slack channel and yeah, I just started posting there about our work and we got our uh, first clients there as well. Go to some trips. So in Poland, for example, there's a really nice founders camp that you can go one week or like a few days with other entrepreneurs and do some kind of uh, mastermind and also they will be happy to talk to you they will be happy to help you out especially if you're starting then you can use service marketplaces uh, this is also how we started so there's upwork fiverr toptal yeah you can try to find first job here as well definitely it's very competitive so it's very hard to land a new project uh, without verified profile without any history and reviews, but trust me, it's doable. There are many tutorials out there. I remember we were sending around 20 proposals every single day for like two weeks to land our first client. So it's a little bit of the grind, but definitely it's worth it. Then you can learn about inbound and outbound marketing and start doing it. In this video, I won't go into details. Definitely we'll cover this in one of the future videos. And you can also learn about sales, especially the calls. So cold mailing, cold calling, that's 100% also a way of getting clients. And people say it's not working, but it's definitely working. I think we did like, I don't know, two or 3,000 calls and didn't really landed anyone, but that was only because we couldn't really make them. Now, when we have really precise offer and target group and ideal customer persona, it's much easier for us. So whenever you are starting, also what's important is not to charge like a lot from the beginning. Uh, offer your work for free or for super cheap just to start, just to get the first customer, first review and first recommendation. So. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. During the speak that I was giving, we had also a nice QA session, but here I'll just replace it with the comments. So feel free to let me know in the comments what you think, uh, what are the struggles that you have right now, or what videos would you like me to record next? Yeah, thanks for watching and I see you in the next time.